Hello, everyone. Let me uh, make sure we're all in the same place. Uh, I hate to go to parties where I'm not invited. So let's make sure I'm on the right screen, shall we? Yeah. I hope you're all having a good day slash night slash morning, whatever it is for you. And I'm so glad to see you here as everyone's jumping on. I just want to say thank you for joining me and spending a little bit of your time with me. All right, let's make sure. There we go. There I am. Hello. Hi, Anne. Hey, Donna. Okay, we're in a good place. Well, we're all in the right place, so that's fine by me then after this. So hello, everyone. I get it. I need to back up. I always look like a head <laughs> in this uh, in this screen. So anyway, I do have shoulders and a whole body that attaches to this, but you really just care about the hands, don't you? So they need a little lotion. Lots of accounting type serious accounting paperwork stuff going on today. <laughs> so let's wash that all away, get that off of our hands and get ready to do a little creating. So I'm so glad to see you here tonight, uh, as most of you know, but maybe there are some newbies. Uh, I am Lisa Harden. I am coming to you live or maybe recorded uh, from the Stamping Zoo. I live in Boise, Idaho, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I will um, be giving you a little tutorial with some current Stampin' Up! products tonight, and I do sell those products that I use. So if you live in the United States and you would like to get your craft on, please talk to me. I would love to be your demonstrator, okay? And I do lots of different things besides sell the product, okay? The product is the cornerstone, though. We always start with the product, which is great. It's the product I use and the product I've been using for between 25 and 30 years now. I used to say 25 years, but that was a few years ago. So I better bump it up a little bit. So I've been using these products for 25 years. Stampin' Up! has been around for over 30 years. And there's a reason why, right? They provide quality, versatile, and on-trend products um, that coordinate easily and help you get started quickly for a great price. So I do invite you to uh, just contact me if you have any questions about the products I'm using. You can uh, text me or call me. You can uh, get that information from my email list if you would like. You can sign up for my email list. Just go to thestampingzoo.com and there will be a pop-up that invites you to subscribe to my email newsletter. And then from there you can get my phone number if you would like. You can also just contact me, just private message me. If you're watching me on Facebook, you can private message me here, or you can also send me a message on YouTube. So I am available, all right? I am passionate about paper crafting and I love it. And one of the best things in my life is that I get to share it with people like you, okay? So please feel free to jump on tonight, say hello, whether you're watching live or on replay, okay? Please just say hi. Tell me if you are new to paper crafting or what do you, you know, what are your favorite colors or what, what are your favorite products, whether you've been using Stampin' Up or whether you would like to give it a try. I just love chatting with other paper crafters, okay? So, and many of you know that. And you also know that once you get me started, I usually can't be stopped. <laughs> so the phone's plugged in tonight, okay? I'm well rested, I am ready for some crafting, and I have what I think is a really fun idea. I was so inspired when I saw it, so we will be talking about that in just a minute. Um, but just as a recap, um, so I was, I was off last Thursday, um, just didn't have to go get it, to get it, right? I needed some rest, so I'm rested now. But the week before that, uh, we played with a couple different things. Or I think I think I was on that Monday. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can look in um, on Facebook or on YouTube. I have several back videos. Most of my videos are on Facebook. They go back over two years, and um, of at least once a week. <laughs> We've been doing this that long. Can you believe it? And so anyway, we were playing with. This is going to be. Let's see. This is going to be backwards unless I fix it. So let me fix it. And then I'll be backwards. 
right? So this is the Simply Seculants stamp set. Say that three times fast. It has coordinating dies, and we created this card. Everybody remember this card? Yes, that was good. We also created this card. Oh, I love it. I love that one. So fun. And then we created this one too. Kind people are my kind of people. So true. Thank you for the love. I appreciate that. And so anyway, you can go back and watch that video if you would like. We also did a little bit of creating with a Hey Birthday Chick. <laughs> Sorry, it gets confusing when you switch the camera. And I also, we also did a purple version, right? So if you like Hey Birthday Chick, it's an excellent bundle. And it also has another, we also have another bundle called Hey Chick. This is so, anyway, um, lots of fun with the chickens, and I know lots of you have it, and I actually did a charmed class, I believe it was just last month, so we've had lots of chickens in our lives, haven't we? Now, I want to show you, so I got some happy mail, um, I believe it was yesterday I got it, and of course I want to show it off, because it's so pretty, and the first thing I did is just what you do when you open your mailbox and there's some happy mail in there, is I went, oh, happy mail, yay, I'm so excited. And um, so this is from Karen Kozlowski, beautiful viewer. Thank you so much, Karen. Let's take a look at this. She's used some Boca paper, beautiful. It's DSP, it's just slightly retired, not, uh, not too long. And I believe this element is from a card kit. Tell us, Karen, if you're live. Um, but I believe this element was from a card kit, but look at her beautiful coloring. Right? Oh, look at that. So anyway, she did some beautiful coloring on it, topped it off with some beautiful yellow sequins. They look like Daffodil Delight or maybe so saffron. But anyway, they're iridescent. Um, some of our self-adhesive. And then look what she did inside. She used one of our beautiful die cuts, right? From Ornate Garden. So that's just one example. Oops, one example. Of how you can mix and match all of the products and again because of Stampin Up's beautiful color coordination system it's super easy to mix and match things and then you know you look like the super crafter that you are and she even has a cute little handmade by Karen Kozlowski on the back I'm not gonna show it because it has her phone number but um, I might call her sometime you never know so anyway thank you so much Karen that made me so happy and um, sending you lots and lots of happy and I want to say I felt it, Karen. <laughs> I felt the happy, Karen. Thank you so much. And we're going to work with a stamp set that is about happy tonight, too. So why don't I turn you on down? Now, this is going to involve a couple steps. Um, I'm only working with one screen. So uh, you're already backwards. I'm going to turn you upside, or me. I'm going to turn me upside down now. So just hang on there. We're all good. And... <laughs> Then you're gonna go swinging down. Just close your eyes for a minute. If it won't hurt, I promise. This part is scary, but it hurts you. <laughs> okay, so hopefully I'm facing right side. I have a slight delay. There's always a slight delay. Nope, it's backwards. Let's see if I can do this. Hmm. Let's. I need to wait just a minute and see if I touch that right. I hate to um, turn it up for you again. Did I get it right? I don't think I did. There, let's try that. I think I did. <laughs> if you could only see what I'm doing, you would be like, uh, she's pretty talented actually. There we go. <laughs> okay. I am getting so good with this whole touch screen and not being able to see the screen, <laughs> but still touching it. <laughs> anyway, so yes, welcome to the Stamping Zoo. As I just said, we love to have all stampers of all kinds here. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy was directing me. There's a delay, and then there's a delay in comments, so I kind of sit here for a minute, and I'm like, is this okay? Is this right? Okay, I can see tons of you have commented already, and I want to say thank you. It fills my 
fills my little heart and I love it so much. So just keep doing it. You keep doing what you're doing. Okay. And I will create something here. So those are the rules. You don't have to uh, do anything other than have a good time, ask questions, um, talk to each other <laughs> and, um, just have fun. And I love it. I love likes. I love, uh, interaction. So please, uh, feel free to, sometimes I'll get into the middle of your conversation and I don't know what's going on. So I seem a little out of the conversation, but don't worry because what happens after I create these cards is the favorite part of my night after this is that I come on and I read all the comments and I answer questions and things like that. So anyway, we're going to work with some brights. Super, I'm sure you're not super surprised at that. Any chance I get, I like the brights. And we are going to work with this beautiful stamp set, Pretty Perennials. It has coordinating dies um, and other dies. It has 23 dies, so it's quite a bargain. You can buy this um, as a bundle. And when you buy both the die set and the stamps together, you save 10%. Let me show you where it is. In our holiday mini catalog. One minute here. You think you have every page uh, memorized, but the thing is, I had every page memorized and then I made myself get a new catalog because my other one was looking really honky tonk. And um, I think there was something to that. I must have had all the pages just like <laughs> moved just right or something. It's kind of funny. So, anyway. This is a beautiful million dollar set that was um, uh, Dina Rico's uh, celebration of her million dollars in sales for Stampin' Up. That's a lot of adhesive, people. Dina sold a lot of adhesive. Okay, so here is the set itself. The patient, there, sorry, here it is in the catalog is what I'm trying to say. Page 31. And if you need catalogs ever and you live in the United States and you aren't working with another demonstrator, please let me know. I would love to get you some catalogs in the mail. Okay? So anyway, here is the all of the stamps and a picture of all of the dies. And if you purchase it all together, it's $45. And um, so anyway, and then it shows some other great supplies. And you want to have the catalogs because they are just um, they're just as valuable for their ideas as they are um, for showing us the products that we want to purchase, right? So anyway, that is the catalog. It will be retiring. Let's see, when does it retire? June 30th. June 30th, is that right? Yep, June 30th. So we have the mini catalog for a little bit longer. We will talk about the annual catalog next week, but it's changing up a little bit. So you're going to see it sooner than you think. Amy, you have this set, but you haven't used it yet. That is sheer will. I don't know how you haven't used this yet. It's so fun. Maybe um, after we use it, after we use it to make a few cards with this technique, you will you will get it out and ink it up. What do you think? So this is a just happy mail card, obviously. Very happy. A little flirty flamingo inside. This is all stamped and embossed in white. And then I've added a little bit of our crinkled seam binding ribbon and I colored that with our Stampin' Blends. Um, flirty flamingo, of course. So everything was easy, coordinated. And um, so we're gonna make some cards using this fun technique. I saw this online from Laura's Craft Closet and uh, Laura inspired me. And then I was like, I've got to do this. It's so fun. So um, we will be working with some different colors tonight, obviously blacks, whites, and then the brights. And I thought I would bring in something with the blues. Let me show you our ribbons. I thought I'd bring in the blues. So some pool party. We've got this beautiful sheer ribbon. Look at that. And then we have this from the annual catalog. It is tricolor ribbon and it's three colors of our purple. 
Gorgeous Grape, Highland Heather, and Purple Posy. So I think these are going to make some beautiful cards. I love black with pops of color. And so that's what this is tonight. And um, if you are crafting along with me, let me know. I put a list up just in case you wanted to, you know. Hello, Leslie. Happy Friday morning, Leslie. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> and so anyway, I have some little die cuts that I've made in advance here. And I have put our adhesive sheets on the back of these dies. I'm going to show you. This is a 6 by 12 package, okay? This is what you get when you order the adhesive sheets. I believe it's $10 US, but you get... 12 of these sheets and it lasts a long time because basically you use this for die cuts things that um, you want to be able to adhere that have lots of fiddly parts right so i am getting really addicted to the adhesive sheets they're so fun and so easy and um, they just make your project really quick so uh, the back of this is essentially a sticker so I did die cut in advance. Um, I have other videos, of course, that show you the basics of die cutting. Um, but for tonight, just know that I use the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine, but I'm not going to make you watch all of that. <laughs> and so anyway, let's get started. Let's see here. I even had time to cut my pieces and parts. Can you believe that? Oh, I cannot believe it, ladies. Ladies and Gary, sorry. <laughs> Is Gary here with us tonight? Gary, give us a shout out if you are. Do we wanna do purple or blue first? We're gonna make both of them, so. And they're gonna be different designs. Uh, let's grab the purple. All right, so <clears throat> again, I've pre-cut. Oh, you know what, I wanna show you the just the basics of embossing, so. But anyway, I've made this in advance. Because you kind of want your embossing to be, well, you want to make sure your embossing is dried before you do this. Because we're going to color on it with our blend markers. Uh, coloring! Who loves coloring? So anyway, we're going to, we are going to color these. And um, there's nothing wrong with this. It's totally great. So if you were going to do this and not color it, oh, well, I got that. I got that the wrong size. We're gonna have to fix that, but let's just say, that's a cool card with a sentiment on it, but we're gonna jazz it up with our purples, right? So we are gonna do that for sure, but I do want to show you, before we get started, um, how to make the basic, the front piece, okay? So this is all just white, like I said, this was white embossing, and then I colored it. So I want to show you, let's just go through that. And um, the bad news is you have to listen to the heat gun, but the good news is it's so fun to watch embossing powder. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe I just said that, but you know what? It's true and you know it's true. <laughs> it's fun. All right, so I have some of the stamps already blocked up. And this is fun whether you use like all the greenery pieces or all the flowers or a mix. Here I use the happy and just colored that in. I mean, look at that. Those, uh, there's just so many cool elements. Um, these are meant to be flower centers, you know, but um, you can either, there's die cuts to cut them out. Then there's separate centers that you can die cut for texture. There's, they've done a fantastic job with the set. Okay, so, and then the stamps have both line images and solid images to kind of fill them out. And um, this is also a distinctive stamp set, which means if you use it with regular pigment ink, uh, you will, excuse me, you will see that you get different shades of the same color by just inking it once and I guess it's just easier to show you right I'll just show you <laughs> there's no lack of cardstock in here I want to I want to guarantee that there's no lack now here's an old here's something I pulled that was a I'm sure it was a Z fold card but that's okay so a distinctive is uh, 
a technology that is exclusive to Stampin' Up. Oh, sounds so fancy, right? It's their technology. So you can stamp a single time with one image and get different shades of the same color. So it looks like you did multi-step stamping, but you've just used the ink powder and the stamp one time. We love it, don't we? Yeah, we love it for that. So anyway, that's how it looks with color, okay? It does the same thing with the embossing powder, and I think that ends up making it look that much better. So uh, let's play with this and um, do a little embossing. Here's one that I embossed that has the flowers, and you can see um, the different high and low points of the stamp. That is the distinctive technology I was talking about. So when you use it with pigment ink, you still get a different, a different amount of ink placed in that area. It's just gonna look totally different after we color it. Okay, so, uh-oh, I did it. Oh, my chamois. Let's see if we can make this last. I didn't put it down. Yeah, I think it has a, it has enough in it. Keep going, baby. This is the stamping chamois. Everyone's looks like this after you've used it a few times. It starts out a beautiful color of Highland Heather, and then it becomes this. Um, but you know what? It's the, one of the best tools, right? So this is just one of our... Um, thin cases. You can buy a four pack and then just put your little chamois in there and then you can clean your or clean your glasses. Okay, no, don't clean your glasses. You can clean your stamps with that. I don't recommend your glasses. <laughs> oh gosh. And you could spit on it. Yes, I could have spit on it, Bernay, but you know what? Thank God there was a little bit <laughs> of a wet still. It was still a little bit okay. All right, I am going to bring in a piece of scrap paper. Um, you know, we all have different ways of keeping the embossing powder away from our the rest of our designing space. Um, lots of times if I'm doing a lot of embossing, I will take this into a different area. So for me, that's the kitchen counter. And um, I'll do all of the embossing in there, and then I will bring all the finished products in here, and then I can wipe down the counter really easily. Um, but I do have this tray, which is great. It is retired, unfortunately, but uh, you can replace it with coffee filter or paper, like I'm doing here. Just something to catch the embossing powder, okay? We are gonna use, whoops, that's clear. We're gonna use white embossing powder and we may use some clear um, for a little bit of extra shine at the end. Not uh, mandatory, but just another little extra technique, okay? Something fun you can do with the photopolymer stamps. So what I'm doing right now is I am running an anti-static tool. This one's called the Embossing Buddy. You can buy them on Amazon, very inexpensive, but it is an anti-static tool. And it is taking, uh, it's getting rid of all of my fingerprints or anything staticky. Because when we are adhering embossing powder to it, we don't want embossing powder to stick in the areas that are not stamped. And it kind of just wants to. It's the nature of the product. It's little, um, it's little what do I want to say, beads of wax and pigment and probably some other super secret stuff I don't know about. But anyway, it wants to stick all over the paper. And so we want to try and prevent that to get a nice clean embossing. And so that's the first way we do it. Then we need some Versamark. It's a watermark stamp ink. We do sell this. And um, so let's see here. I used a little bit of everything. Let's see what's not on the blocks and see if we want to use it. Um, this leaf is pretty cool. How about, well, I really just love that. I really love the line one, that, the lines, the little lined flower that I have out. It's so cute. So we'll go ahead and use that one. And we will um, also use the large flower that we just inked up in red. Okay. 
Let's put a few of these down and I don't have anything in particular in mind. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be something like some flowers with, oops, with a sentiment, right? With a, with a sentiment um, beside it or something like that. So maybe let's do a little grouping. And so I am using this, I can tell I'm a little off camera, sorry. I can't get everything mushed in there. Um, I'm using the Versamark and you may or may not be able to see it, but I am watermark stamping this piece of cardstock. This is very hard to see, um, but maybe you can see it there. It really just shows up as like a different tone of your, of your cardstock. In this case, black, right? And then, whoops, then let's add a couple of these little groupings of circles. Maybe one here, maybe one going off the page. And yeah, I like that. Okay, so now that we have that, you wanna get this out of the way, okay? Because you wanna get things out of the way a little bit so that you don't coat them in embossing powder. <laughs> That's the name of this game. And it's not super hard, but it happens, right? To the <clears throat> Excuse me. To the extent that I can, I'm going to use my wooden tweezers, or they're called wooden, they're called toaster tongs, actually. They're from the Pampered Chef. <laughs> but um, you can also use tweezers, whatever you like, to hold on to things. Do it, man. Do it, Megan. Work on it this weekend. <laughs> Are a couple of you working together? You might be. Okay, so then I just, I don't worry about it. Like I said, if I was just doing a little bit, I wouldn't pour so much embossing powder on it. But this is a large one. We, we definitely want to make sure all of our images get fully powdered. I am sure that's, the, that's what it's called right? Give a little flick. That's my patented movement. <laughs> it's my patented embossing move. And you'll see like, there's just a little bit of powder there. There, if you don't use the tongs, there may be a little bit of powder where you put your finger to hold the paper. It happens, especially on black with white. It's, it's not the first type of embossing you should start with. So, we had a kit one time that had this with some watercolor pencils, and it's a great little paintbrush for this. So if you still have this paintbrush, just use it for the use it for embossing powder cleanup, um, or any other little paintbrush that you have. You know, just make sure it's not too big. You want to get around all of the little elements. Okay, so for right now, this is going to safely be stowed off to the side. Let's hope it's safely. Um, I'm going to move this, shake it off in my recycling bin. Okay. And then I'm firing up the heat, the heat gun. Sorry. Now this is where my tongs really come in handy. A um, couple things before I turn this on, I can speak over it, but it's easier. It's easier if I tell you now, you don't want to take this immediately to the paper. You want to wait a few seconds until your heat gun gets nice and hot. I put it kind of against my wrist and test it like you're testing a bottle for a baby. Um, so you want this to heat up a little bit and then um, that helps to not warp the paper. It helps to get the embossing powder um, melted really quickly and you, then you just want to keep the gun moving. Okay, so test on your wrist, but don't do that for a long time. <laughs> I just let it run a few seconds. It's definitely not anything you have to run for a minute or whatever. And then just start working around on your images. Lots of people do it from the back too. Um, I kind of go back and forth because this will warp the paper a little bit. Now, hopefully you can see that turning from dull white to shiny white. That's what you want, okay? And you want to make sure you get the entire surface. If you see anything left over that's dull, that means it will just, uh, it's not done. It will just wipe off when you start to work with it. 
So let's make sure we've got it heated up. And then I go to the back to kind of straighten the paper out. You can also do that by just putting it under something heavy for a little bit. I'm pretty sure we're done, but I want to look at it sideways here. And I bring it up right up to my face because that's how blind I am nowadays. And anyway, this is all cooked. It's all melted. So, like I said, I don't want to use this immediately with, this is a lot of embossing powder. And also, for the technique that we're using, you just need to let it dry for even five minutes is probably more than enough. But um, your brother called right when I started. Doesn't he know? Oh, sometimes, brothers, I swear. Okay. So now we're going to switch to, that's all it is for the embossing, everyone. The, some of the embossing powders and the heat gun itself, they are on back order if you go out there right now to order them because you love them. Um, they're on back order, but they're supposed to be in any time. So my advice is order them. They're going to be in. They're not getting rid of them or anything. And then... Um, as soon as they're available, they get shipped to you. You don't have to wait for them, um, you know, to go back. You don't have to wait to go back in and place the order. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to cut a new piece of gorgeous grape. Let's see here. Come on. Now, all the pieces for the front are three and three quarters by five. And so I just want the first card layer, the matte, the colored layer. I just want this to be an eighth of an inch. So we're just doing a small mat. So I need this to be three and seven eighths, I believe. Let me check this though. Maybe that was the problem. Three and, oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. This particular one is four. So don't listen to me. Nobody knows. Anyway, so in this case, this front is four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to do four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Okay. Well, that was the issue. And I could always cut, cut down the front, but it's fine. I like it the way it is. So now, as you can see, we're going to have a thin mat of the darkest purple up on the black. Oh, I love it. This looks like one of an, it looks like an outfit that I have. Not the flower part, but the purple and the black. <laughs> okay, now this is where I'm just kind of showing you all the great color coordination that Stampin' Up! has done for us. So we don't have to do a lot of scheming and we don't have to run around all the aisles of unnamed discount crafting store looking for supplies and just having them, you know, having them be out of things or God forbid you don't have a coupon. <laughs> you don't have to worry about any of that. And like I said, I will even help you with your order should you want me to. So let's see here. I don't think we have gorgeous grape blends, but that's okay. Um, do you want me to bring in a third color or do you guys just like the purple? You can tell me. I mean, you can, you can, um, I'm going to use your advice on that. It is pretty already. Thanks, Brene. Oh, Brene, where have you been? You know, my little positive friend. <laughs> Isn't this going to look so cool? I love it already. Okay, uh, tell me if you would like a third color or if we just want to use the different shades of pretty um, Highland Heather and Purple Posy. There we go. They're very close. So we can bring in like a yellow if you would like, or we can just leave them. Brene says purple. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you guys, so fun. I am having a little fresca tonight. Um, please let me know if you're having something more exciting. Good for you. I'm going to move this up just a little bit. 
I don't think you need to be that close to my old lady hands, do you? Old lady hands. Who has old lady hands? Get real. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Swing it around. The roller coaster's swinging tonight. It's a hot Thursday night around here. <laughs> okay, and yeah, let's try that. All right. There we go. That helped a little bit. Okay. Slush, what? Oh, <laughs> slush made with the snow machine. That sounds excellent. <laughs> Isn't the dark Highland Heather the same color as Gorgeous Grape? I don't know. Maybe. We are going to use just the purples. Let's just stick with it. You know it's my favorite color. So, Megan, you're so diplomatic. You're like, either would be good. Just You just do you. All right, Megan. <laughs> I'll just do me. Here's some dark Highland Heather. These do normally go on also a little more like, a little brighter than... Um, then they dry too. So uh, just a quick note about these. These are alcohol markers. If you are going to stamp with them, you can use any of our classic stamping pads with them or our memento. Um, one minute here. Of course, that's in a drawer that was um, hide, hidden by the embossing powder. This is the memento. This is what you want to use with the blends, okay? We're currently also the mementos back order right now. So if you live near me, you can come over and borrow one of my memento ink pads. Otherwise, just hold tight and you can order one. <laughs> Need to move up a bit. Oh, I thought I did, but I better move it up a little bit more. Um, Let's see, I'm out of screen towards the bottom. I am, huh? Thank you, Kathy. Um, Kathy is one of my technical directors and I appreciate it so much because I don't have one. I need some, I need someone to help me with that. Okay. Let's see if this looks better. You have, you probably have to see a little bit too much of my junk, but, um, maybe I can do a slight happy medium there. Okay. I think. I might have it. I moved this so I could talk with you, and then there's always there's always a little bit of, you know, adjustment. How about this? Oh, it looks the very same. <laughs> Hi, Jean. Uh, you can order Memento reinkers. Oh, that's good to know. Is this? I'm going to try one more time. Sorry. And then I swear I'll stop. But I think it was lower than I was before. I think I see the problem. Yes, I have been doing videos for over two years. However, when you use this little, when you use this little stand, I wish there was, I wish it would like click into place and then you'd know like, oh, okay. You know, like your car seat or something. So, you know, like, oh, all right. That's where I use when I am trying to show card making. Okay. I think we're good now. We had a little bit of adjustment. Thank you. Did I just see who's laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing with you. Don't worry. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> this is where we're going to be. So, um, anyway, as I was saying before we had some technical standby, <laughs> let's try this dark Highland Heather. I am going to, for the most part, I'm going to use the paintbrush end. There's a bullet point and a paintbrush and I'm just lightly coloring over these. Now you can go ahead and color completely over them. Don't scribble on them with the bullet point. That's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. So, um, then this, let's just do these in dark. The cool thing about doing this on black too, as Laura mentioned, is that you don't have to worry too much about going outside of the lines, right? I wouldn't color all over the black on purpose because you can see some of the brush strokes, but if you just go out a little bit, 
no one's ever going to see. No. Oh, now I can feel. Oh, see, I was going to say that one didn't get completely um, melted. And I hope you guys could see that actually. Just a little bit of it came off. So what I'm going to do real quick is bring this in. Heat that up and see. And we'll come back to that one. So you can, I found that you can color over these more than once for sure and build up the color that way. But also, once we get all of these um, colored, we are going to reheat it with the heat gun again. Yeah. So that's. Um, that's going to like embed it, uh, basically give you colored embossing powder, right? Kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Now I have the dark purple posy. So purple posy is an in color, which will be retiring when our annual catalog retires, which is going to be a month earlier than normal this year. They're trying some new things. So, um, our new annual catalog will be coming to customers in May, I believe, instead of June. So if you like the in colors that are going to be retiring, you should be buying those supplies now. So you should be buying your um, cardstock, the blends. Um, I think I saw that Rococo Rose... Um, another in color is on low inventory for the cardstock, so that's a sign. Um, and anyway, so you should be making your little shopping list, and I would recommend getting those tomorrow, the next day, um, in the next few days, because it's kind of like there's a run on the bank, right? This is light purple posy. Let's try it. I don't know how light. Uh, I think it might be too light, but um, oh yeah, it's really light. No, I think it's too close to. It's. I want it to be a little more um, intense. Here's light Highland Heather, and that should do the job for us. Oh, that's pretty. See how all these different purple hues are playing together. I'm really liking them. Is everybody else liking this? I think it's kind of fun. I will tell you, it's very um, relaxing. It's also kind of fun to use all of the stamps and just make your own background, which is what we did here. If you don't want to use embossing powder, you can do the same thing by just using the regular craft ink and stamping all over cardstock. <laughs> and that's fun. Give that a try. And the other thing you can do is Make sure you aren't just always using white cardstock. Use ivory or no, no, very vanilla. Um, we also have a shimmer white cardstock, which gives you another different effect. We have a crap, uh, we have no crumb cake. And so just take a minute to um, look at all the different choices and, and uh, see how your stamps look on different cardstock. I think we get white stuck in our mind all the time. And basic white is fantastic. Um, but we have like 49 or 50 other colors. Okay, one last one here. That's that light purple posy. Let's do the light um, Highland Heather. I don't even know. I was trying to not put them beside each other. And then I realized it really doesn't matter. They're pretty cool, the way they are. So fun. Ooh, look at that. Okay, and this is a really cool background. This needs a sentiment or not. You could do just whatever you wanted with it. Um, the alcohol does dry really quickly, but I am going to um, come over it again with, here's another little trick that I thought was really fun. Now we're gonna kind of encase it. We are gonna come over this with clear embossing powder. <laughs> so it's just gonna make, um, make everything a little extra shiny. So here's what it looks like. 
if you just colored it, I already think it's really cool. It looks like neon, right? Doesn't it look fun? Some of these colors aren't even showing up for you. That's too bad. Um, some of them are showing as white to me on my screen. So I do apologize. Let's see if we can get them back to, um, to looking more purple. Yeah, they're kind of, let's see. Let me also show you. Here's, maybe that helps. See, they're not actually white. They're light purple. So anyway, we are, it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to use the brightest brights that you have to make it look really fun. And um, it's just that you can't see all the differences in my video, which is why it's really best to try all these things by yourself. Actually try them, right? Because there's so much fun in doing that and you get to see all of the different textures when you're doing that. So, okay, we're gonna take our stamps again. Since we have photopolymer stamps, we're gonna take our little leaf and twig and then our, um, I don't know, bunch of circles in a circle, circular shape. <laughs> and we are going to um, stamp it with Versamark, which I just put out of the way. Here we go. And Donna, you had a Zoom meeting? Oh, okay. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay. You listen to them and watch me. I'm not going to say I haven't ever done that before. I'm guilty. So you can see right through these, right? And one side of this particular stamp is a little bit flatter. And so it makes it really easy to line this up again. And actually you don't have to be right on the image because if you aren't right on it, you'll still get almost like a little shadowy effect. Okay, just make sure that you don't touch the ones you've already done. So. For the most part, I'm working from the left to the right. I bet three quarters of you will work from the right to the left. You little right-handed people out there are gonna be all opposite and just do this backwards. But you know what, that's all right. I'm fine with you if you do that. We all craft a different way, but we all come up with cool things. So, <laughs> all right, and then this guy. It's a little slick when you are stamping on it, which makes sense. Um, so just kind of don't let your stamp move around like that, right? Okay, and then we have plenty of time. Um, so Versamark is slower to dry than the craft inks. So um, it gives you a little bit of time to do all of this fun work. And let me get this one. Ooh, I'm excited to see what this looks like. Especially on black. It's just going to give it a little shine. You're not really going to see the design um, if the stamp goes outside of the regular pattern. But I think it's all going to add up to be a really cool graphic design here. I might like this one on a shirt for sure. Remember I told you I had an outfit that's purple and black. Well, now I decided I want a shirt that's this design. <laughs> okay, so now we need clear embossing powder, okay? It looks just like white, so just make sure you have the clear. Or you'll probably create a whole new thing. All right, and let's bring this in. Now, I didn't use the static tool again. Um, I well, Let's see what happens. I don't think we're gonna have an issue, but now I'm just using some paper because I only have one tray and the paper works just as fine, or it works just as well. Um, it just all depends on what you have at hand. Like I said, coffee filters, because they're anti-static anyway, so they work really well too. But I don't think I have any coffee filters. If I did, it would have been for a stamping project. So I'm not sure. Give it the patented flick and looks like we're good to go. 
Now, I need to move this to a super safe location as well. Oh, embossing powder sitting on a flat piece of paper. I am so living so dangerously right now. Now, I don't know that I need to really... I'm going to look at where I was holding this and make sure there's not a bunch of clear powder on there, but I think we're good to go. Some of these are a few just white flecks. That is going to happen because of the nature of white embossing powder on black paper. Okay, so we're doing the same thing again. Just this time we're going to get a shine instead of white. Okay, so we'll start over here, see what happens. Ooh, I like it immediately. I love watching it. I hope you guys can see it. It never gets old. <laughs> that's a really cool effect and again I just kind of hope you guys can see it but um, it just it kind of like encased the color between the embossing powders and um, it looks pretty fun let's see let me bring this in again or let me bring that white in again the next card we do I think the colors will show up a little bit better but anyway once we put it all together and you can see it with relation to the um, ribbon. I think that will show off a little bit better. It's super cool. I really like it. Oh, so cute. <laughs> so cute. All right. This is an adorable background. I really like it. And, um, we, now we're going to think about how we're going to run our ribbon across it. I know. I know. I, I knew that I had a fair amount of lefties. Yes, I knew that. Mm, I'm not so sure about that now. I don't know that I want to hide anything. I love my purple ribbon. Oh, what do you guys think? I think as soon as I put that up there, I was like, yeah, I think I like this better. You tell me. I'll use either. I will use the purple ribbon or I will use the twine. The only reason I like the twine is because I think it's a little more, you can see the pattern. Come here, Cash, you're okay. What are you doing? Let's wait for the ladies. The ladies are deciding. <laughs> you're okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> He's dancing around. This dog does not know how unsteady I am on my feet. I swear. Whenever I'm... This morning, I was doing my exercises, my physical therapy exercises for my hip. And so I was walking around basically like a Frankenstein. It's called the monster walk. Um, with the exercise band around my ankles. And he was like dancing around me. And I wanted to say like, kid, you've got to get out of the way. <laughs> All right. Looks like some twine. Yes. See? We're all on the same, we're on the same wavelength. This is beautiful ribbon, but save it for another project. Uh, let's see, I will be retiring though because it does have purple posy in it. So if you would like some of this as well, um, that is something you'll need to be ordering sooner rather than later. <laughs> oh, you're a righty. Wow, Kathy, I can't believe um, don't worry, there are lots of other righties on here, right? Um, there, I'll set a little, I'll set a little card off here for inspiration. And we have lots of really cool little sentiments, all centered around the word happy. Happy mail, happy for you, happy birthday. You make me happy and sending lots of happy, or you could say sending lots of happy mail. Um, stuff like that. So anyway, uh, I kind of like happy birthday. Why not? This one was happy mail. It's just an, in general, happy mail. Um, let's see. 
kind of wondering if I shouldn't die cut this on vellum or I mean stamp it on vellum. I kind of want to. So, um, and I think that's what Jen was doing this morning when I popped in and saw Jen Houston. Um, I think she was coloring the vellum. So, uh, I don't know that we're going to do that, but I think we can do, let me think. I didn't even think about this, you guys. What's wrong with me? Um, let's see. I need a little label die. One minute. Let me grab some of my favorites. Oh. Yeah, Lisa, you didn't think about this part. That's okay. Oh, that might be good. I'm just sizing this up. Um, but it has to be vellum. And I guess I could stamp on the vellum in Stazon, right? Yes, I think that'll work. So these are the painted labels dies. They came with one of the poppy sets, I believe. And um, they're really fun. This is a... <laughs> This is such a popular die. Um, it's just cool because it's a it's a swirl, obviously, that's stitched and then has a, a center that is um, that you can put a sentiment in. It doesn't cut out a hollow middle. It, it has a solid center. So anyway, this is a really cool set to have. And then, of course, this little scallop is really pretty and fun. So let's see what we can do with this on some vellum. Yes. We get so hung up on pattern paper. Yeah, somebody was saying that. And um, nothing wrong with pattern paper. We get hung up on it because it's absolutely gorgeous, right? <laughs> Excuse me. I know what my problem is. My problem is, well, let's be honest. I have a lot of problems, but my problem with what you um, with regard to this coughing, <laughs> is that um, I'm having allergies already, you guys. Gosh, how's that even possible? I'm not sure, but I don't like it. Now, normally, you're not supposed to use um, stays on with your with your photopolymer stamps because it can dry them out. I think that's probably over a lot of time. But here's another little trick that I use over the years um, is that I will ink it up with Versamark first and that's gonna be like a little protective layer. Um, Jean, I use two sizes of magnetic sheets. They are from Stampin' Storage. The ones that fit inside our actual cases are six and three quarters by four and three quarters. So hope that helps. And um, those are the ones that fit into our plastic or our um, stamp cases. The other ones are too big, but they come in handy for those larger sets. Okay, so I put a layer, if you will, of Versamark on that, okay? We are going to try to prevent heavy staining by doing that. Now we get out stays on. It's another black. It's in an, it's a more, it gives you a more intense image and it's used for other applications and we are not going to get hung up on that right now, but just don't use it with your blends. That's all I need to tell you. Don't use it with the blends. Okay, and let's see how that worked. That is gorgeous. I know you can't see that because I'm I was pulling down by myself. <gasps> Look how pretty it is. Okay, now I'm gonna grab the um, kind of forgotten, but I think we're gonna do the word birthday. I don't even remember what I said before I was going to do. I was so hung up on. But you know what? It's going to be a really pretty birthday card. 
So, and you can see me using all these different blocks. We sell all of these beautiful acrylic blocks. They are so comfortable in the hand. They're ergonomic, right? It makes a difference when you're stamping all day. Believe me, some of you are laughing, but it's true. It makes a lot of difference. Avid stampers know this, right, ladies? Um, and Gary probably even knows this, doesn't he, Roz? Yes. So, anyway... Be sure that um, you add a few of our blocks to your orders every now and then, and then you'll have every every size of block you need. Okay, I do need to bring this towards me. I'm keeping it straight or hoping to keep it straight because I can see the grid lines through this vellum. Okay, very helpful. So I am going to bring it down here, and I know you can see my hair. That's okay. You can check it out for me. Tell me if you like it. It's been recently quaffed, so I don't think there's too many grays up there. Pretty close, a little lighter than I would like, but I'm not going to redo it. And I could have put that in the Stamparatus, but you know, I was being a little lazy. Okay, now I am going to wipe this off really quickly on the side of my chamois because um, I really need to use the cleaner. There's a special Stampin' Up! or Stays on Cleaner. I will use that later. You guys don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, this looks good. I'm going to hit this with the heat tool also um, because vellum is basically non-porous or very non-porous. So we want to dry it so we don't smudge this. And vellum will warp as well. You just have to, you know, just watch it. Gary is asleep already. <laughs> it's my dream that Gary stays awake for one of my lives sometime. <laughs> it's a dream. It might not happen, but it's a dream of mine. <laughs> okay, I hope that's dry. Let me look at it. I'm looking at it again, just like I was looking at the um, white embossing powder. I hope this fits in there. Oh, goodness. It's, oh, I'm going to cut a tiny bit off because of that birthday. What? Lisa. Okay, I'm going to try it. We may have to do a redo, but... Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to fit, you guys. Why didn't you stop me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll try it, but I think we might be redoing it real quickly. So, it's okay. It is dry. That's good. All right, I guess we're going to use the die cutter after all. We're going to use the mini. The mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Only $60. Very handy. Did you just need a little die cutter? It's great to keep on your desk. And it really, it doesn't have, obviously it doesn't have the full size platform, but it does so much of the die cutting that I find myself using it even when you guys aren't here, right? I use it so you can watch me, but really um, it doesn't matter. Now I have, there we go. I was like, oh great. Now I misplaced the die. Story of my life. Uh, this is slick. So I do, and I'm already pushing up against something that I think is not going to fit. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this purple tape and tape this die down. Okay, just to give it a little insurance that the vellum stays where I want it to. I'm not going to tape inside, just taping on the on the die and on the outside. And then when you're using the mini, you need to place your plates so that your top plate um, is a little bit more forward than the rest of them. And then we're ready to roll. Oh my gosh, what, so it's, um, the time changed, obviously. <gasps> Hallelujah. I think we could use that. That's beautiful. So it's a really fun die and maybe, okay, I'm looking at it and maybe presentation wise, this, this should be up a little bit closer, but you know what? It's all right. I mean, 
I've only said I'm perfect a few times. So I'm liking that. We're going to use it. And actually, we might make an opportunity out of that spacing and we might run our twine right there. Yes, I think we will do that. I'm still afraid to touch it, but I know it's fine because I put it in there. Um, I put it in the die cutter, so I'm sure it's fine. Okay, so one thing I think I'm going to do. Oh, that's going to be fun. Look at that. We are so clever. Now I need to decide, though, how I'm going to adhere this. I know if Megan were here, she would tell me to run some um, adhesive underneath. Let's see. She would tell me to sponge some glue on this, but I don't know that I want it laying flat down. Hmm. I might have to, though. I don't know if there's too many places where I can hide some dimensional back there. You've been having trouble with your mini? Oh, yeah, Kathy. Try that for sure. Try that. Yeah, Denise. I like the big boss, too. I call, I call my lady Wonder Woman. I love Wonder Woman. Um, I would say that the mini is not an adequate replacement for the standard size, but... Um, it's really nice to have. And if you do a lot of die cutting, um, it's just nice. Okay, we're going to see that. Does it, adhesive sheet. Yes. You know what? Roz, that's why you're on the payroll. Now, I thought of that one night in bed. The adhesive sheets on vellum. And then um, I promptly forgotten about it. So there you go. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, I am going to. One thing I need to do is die cut. I need to run this through with the die cutting machine. So it's probably a little wonky, but we're going to do it. Gonna re die cut this. Okay, so these are the adhesive sheets that I was bragging about so much, right? Um, let's see. Actually, I'm gonna cut this. Oh my gosh, I have geese flying overhead. Make sure you're on the opposite side. Normally, you would adhere this before you started stamping, right? But we're gonna do this. Yes, because Roz saved my bacon. Yes, so anyway, um, lots of use for the mini die cut, but the big one, like if you're doing lots and lots of die cutting, uh, then I reach for the big one. Okay, the hardest part about using the adhesive sheets sometimes is if you cut a piece that's so small that you don't have the perforation on it, it's getting it started. That's the hardest part. <laughs> it is pre-cut for us, but only in certain amounts of the die cut. Okay, this is the one. I'm just going to stick this down like this. Oh, gosh. We've got some dogs uh, in the action there. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. Again, this is not like the perfect order you would normally do this. But, um... You know what? We might not need to run it through the die cut. Let me, again, not normally how I would do it. Normally you would put it on there first and then use the die cut. I bet we can cheat this though. Because remember, this stuff is super thin. Um, the adhesive sheet, the adhesive layer itself is really thin. So I think if we just peel it off and kind of like roll it over on the back, I think it'll still be fine. I need to have this near. I feel like a doctor right now, performing surgery. <laughs> What's going to happen? Will this work? Oh my gosh, it's 8, 16. We're never going to get through the second card. Well, I'm glad this was a good one. 
I always have the highest hopes, but I'll still make the card and you know, I'll post it as a still tomorrow. And, um, then there you go. There will be also be a blog post about it. Um, and it will be on Pinterest. So, you know, that should help. Okay. And then this gets peeled off. And like I said, some of it came off, but some of it just kind of wrapped around itself. Okay, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, okay. And so there, oh, what do you think about that? I love it, that's a cool idea. Okay, and let's wrap this around here. Somebody talks too much, Tango. She can only make one card in an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't know what was up with him yesterday. He was just being Tango, what can I say? But, um, so this twine is from the Playful Pets. You get a combo of this with this beautiful red and white ribbon with stitching. So this is sold in the same package. Awesome. It's in the, uh, is it in the annual catalog? I think so. Anyway, it's super gorgeous. So back to my dog. Um, he usually is very calm after my dog sitter comes because, you know, I've told you many times she walks them. She does an excellent job. She's a lot faster than me. And anyway, so they usually act totally calm. Cash is always cool, Modi. He's always super cool. Tango, not super cool. Tango is like, I don't know, um, Tigger the Tiger, or <laughs> whatever that thing was called on Winnie the Pooh. And so anyway, yesterday, I swear, he was reminding me of um, when... Andy, I'm, I'm doing an office, <laughs> I'm doing an office comment or an office, um, I'm talking about an office scene. So he was reminding me of when Andy, Michael, and Dwight were running around the building doing parkour. <laughs> he was, Tango was literally like bouncing off the kitchen cabinets and running around and barking at nothing going on and he just would not settle down I don't know if he had spring fever like legitimate spring fever or what but then today it's kind of like oh okay I'm gonna be totally calm today it's very weird I just don't know what to expect and the kid's nine so it's not like he's gonna change all of a sudden and frankly Kind of like that. Oh, this is really fun. Isn't this a fun technique, you guys? I love it. Okay, we're going to pop this up. But these are some pieces and parts from adhesive sheets. You could probably see that I cut out images. I think I cut them out when I was working with all of you. <laughs> yeah, he had crazy zoomings for sure. He was just he was, he was extra. Isn't that what the kids say now? He was extra yesterday and his mom didn't want him to be extra. So these are the foam adhesive sheets. So I die cut the chickens out of them. Yeah, that's what I did. I die cut the chickens out of them last time, but don't throw away the pieces that you don't die cut because then you can use them for these great, um, adhesive backs and you can really like, support most of a card with just these all these odd shapes right these happen to be um, mostly have a flat space on them but um, anyway and then I'll just put this one in the middle to support it nobody knows that it's all wonky just us just us 
So, yes, he got the, what kind of dogs do you have? I have two Havanese, Denise. They are named Tango and Cash. And um, you will often hear them here. Um, I, I do not make highly edited videos, Denise. I make videos based on my real life, and I do tell stories. And so I'm just giving you, um, that's a friendly warning. Should I say warning? Um, people have people who like highly edited videos with no chit chat probably really don't like me, um, and that's okay uh, because I found my people, right? And okay, I just was trying to lift this up. I realized this thing was so thin, but it's fine. It was just how it was coming off. Oh, I'm liking it. Okay, now we need our actual card, right? And why don't I just glue this down? Because it has so much dimension on it right now that I don't want to press on it with um, the seal. This is really cute. I'm sorry. I know I made it. That sounds really weird. But um, I love this technique. It's super fun. Like I said, this one's like bright and happy. This one's actually like more subtle, but um, I hope you can see this looks fine. Um, it's just that there might be some shine from the vellum. Ah, uh, it looks like it's playing okay. And we're not finished. We need some bling and I happen to have some. I have a couple different kinds, but um, we have, let me make sure. We have the holiday rhinestones. And I believe those have some gorgeous grape. Let me make sure. I might be thinking about some retired. Let's see here. No. Oh, none but they're very cute. Um, we will just use regular, beautiful, basic rhinestones. And I think that'll be great. So these are rhinestone basic jewels. Yes. They're anything but basic. They're gorgeous. Now, where did my take the pick tool run off to? That's okay. I'll use the tweezers if it works. So I'm just going to peel off a couple of these. Of course, I'm going to put one on the vellum to kind of bring that in and then maybe put, maybe put them on the black. Now, when we were working with Jen this morning, right, we had her put the rhinestones in the middle of the flowers and that looked really gorgeous. But, um, I don't have a center of anything here to kind of play off of. So I'd rather just put it, um, I'd rather like light up some of the dark spaces, right? Oh, so pretty. So, so pretty. Look at that. I'm loving this. Just take this little guy and some a gorgeous grape and bring that little flower in. I still have it out. It's somewhere. I know it is. Hmm. Come on out. Don't hide from me. Well, let's use this one. It's the solid one. It will work. It'll be really fun little solid purple in there. Oh, so cute. And again, you get that lovely distinctive stamping. So it looks really multicolored, only you've just stamped it one time. Oh, oh look at that. And that's where there's two sides to the paper. <laughs> Who has got the zoomies now? Jeez, Lisa. <laughs> a 
Christmas, Bad Mouth and Tango. All right, there. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Look, there's not a thing wrong with it. And we are going to glue that in. Well, hello, Lois. You just got home. I hope you were having a fun day, Lois. Very nice to say hi to you. All right, everyone. So I hope you're liking this technique. Like I said, I will post still pictures tomorrow, which is Friday the 19th on my Facebook page. So if you're not currently, if you're watching me on YouTube and you don't follow me on Facebook, please jump over and like the Stamping Zoo. I am a small business of exactly one employee and um, my co-workers are two dogs. <laughs> so I would love to place some orders for you. I would love to help you find just those perfect supplies for you. And if you are interested in uh, making more cards like this, let's chat and I can help you get just the right supplies. Okay, everyone. That was a lot of fun. I appreciate you so much. I hope you had fun with it. And um, I'll see you soon. <laughs> okay, bye. I need to now I need to bring you up. Sorry. I'm going to make you dizzy and I'm going to be upside down. I forgot about this part. See? Sorry. Hello. <laughs> okay, I'm back, everybody. But I hope you had a great night. And I know I did. Um, so anyway, I'll be seeing you soon. And actually, I'm pretty sure you're going to see me tomorrow night. Uh, because I just got... A really fun thing in the mail right I think you know what it is the paper pumpkin so I got the paper pumpkin in the mail and so I think we should probably put it together tomorrow night so uh, join me back here man 24 ish hours I'll see you again okay everybody have a great night thank you so much I appreciate you